On today's show, we have a special guest, A.B. Chetrin in studio. We just talked a bunch of NBA, from the trade deadline to All-Star Weekend and even our mid-season MVPs, all the awards, and some predictions for the second half of the season, because it's going to be a great one. Let's go. Welcome to the Slow Guy. Welcome back, Amy. Was this your third time already? Third. This is kind of crazy. I'm gonna get tired this of you. <laughs> 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 no, it's no. I love talking NBA with you. It's a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So. A lot of stuff happening in the last, I don't know, was it a month? We got the trade deadline, All-Star Weekend. Let's start with the trade deadline. First trade that comes to mind, obviously D-Lo. Obviously. Mm -hmm. Biggest 100%. trade of the entire time. The entire deadline. Honestly, I thought it was going to happen in the summer. Like, he was going to sign as a free agent, then they do the sign and trade with the Warriors. Eh. But we all knew it was coming. Yeah, I thought it sure. would more happen on, likely to happen on draft night when we knew exactly what the Timberwolves are. But now... Looks like the Warriors could have two top ten picks this year, which mm -hmm. is kind of scary when you add on to Draymond, Steph, Clay. You know, but that, also D'Lo's going to make them better in the second half. I think. I don't know about that. I don't know if they're a lottery team. Are no, they? I don't know if there's that much better because a cats hurt now. Is cats hurt? Cat cat, really? Yeah, cats cat, out. Cats out for the next few games with a wrist injury. Ooh. And uh, D'Angelo Russell, while he is good, and. Deal is good, but he's not gonna be able to carry them out of a top ten pick. Impossible. Their issue, the issue wasn't offense; it was defense. Mm -hmm. And Deal well, doesn't fix yeah. that. I mean, he might be better than Wiggins, but I don't think I mean, Wiggins is a bad fit with the Warriors too, fit. though. I like the move for both sides. But I think he complements. I think he complements better than Deal. Yeah, hundred percent. Yes, 100%. he does. I think Wiggins has the talent. It's gonna be about like playing in the Warriors style of basketball because they are the way they do things is just like passing, passing, passing. He Wiggins has always been like an ISO type player. Have to see really how it works out. But if he plays maybe the Harrison Barnes role, he's you never more know. athletic than Harrison Barnes. He whatever he can, it can work out. Can I think he could play out. a great three mm -hmm. next to uh, Clay and uh, Steph. You just I gotta learn how to shoot. Yes, he does. Very badly. But he averages like 20 points a game, no? Yeah, but, yeah, he can't but shoot. his, his three-point shot is it's it's not. Broken. It's yeah. horrendous. Mm -hmm. It's horrendous. Yes. So work on it this summer. Okay. I think it'll be okay. This is one thing that I do want to, like, say. People are like, you know, like, like there's like a huge thing with duos in the NBA. Yeah. Like, for some reason, duos are a thing. Duos Elo are definitely. Elon and Kat are not that good. Like, no. they are not the upper echelon duos. No, 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 no. No, like, there's three like, duos that come like, to my head, Like, when you talk about easily before, Kyrie, like, KD... Yeah. Steph Clay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, LeBron AD. LeBron AD. What about, what about, Russ, what about Russ and uh, Russ Harden? Harden. Yeah. That's so much better. Harden's than, playing. I mean, they're, Russ saying, there has to be like, as like a young duo. Young they're, duo. They're duo. Young yet. duos. They're you have what? You have John Morant and you know? and uh, Jared Jared Jackson, Jackson Jr. Then you have Trey Young and John Collins. I don't know. Just like the young duos. Mm -hmm. They're they're probably the best. R.J. Barrett and Mitchell Robinson. Get out of my face! Freaking face! Nonsense. That's funny. No. <laughs> like Nets have Nets have Those a only two guys better like duo off, off the bench than that. Uh, <laughs> Wait, aren't you a Celtics fan, not a Knicks fan? I am. Oh yeah. my god. I mean Tatum and Brown. It's <laughs> God. They're God. Yeah. I'm not a fan of the uh, the headband though on Jason Tatum. I don't think it looks Tatum, right. Tatum, Tatum can wear whatever the hell he wants if he's dropping 39 <laughs> so on Kawhi. Good. If he's dropping 40 on Kawhi and limiting him, I actually read he's this stat yesterday. So good. He held him to like like two of like eight shooting when he guarded Kawhi, really? something like that. He shut Kawhi down and he dropped forty on him. He could wear whatever the hell he wants. <laughs> it's true. Okay, moving on. The Cavaliers. Yikes. Weird. You just weird. No, Yikes. I like it. I like it for the Cavs only because, like, listen, Why? they don't need Drummond obviously, but if you can get Drummond for a bag of chips, you take it. Yeah. Either way, it doesn't make a difference. You get that statement. It might ruin their draft pick, like one or two slots, which I guess makes it not worth it for them to do. But no, but the draft right now is weird. Where even matter. if you drop back to like the fifth best odds, you can still get the first pick. Yeah, but you don't want that. You just yeah, want no, to of course you want to be the lowest. At the at what the Cavs have right now, you're going for ping pong balls. Like that's what you're playing for. You're playing for the most possible best odds. Yeah, I guess Drummond. There's a 99 percent chance he leaves. If he doesn't leave, if he decides, it okay, I'm not million in, dollars, like. it's worth the trade. 
like like of course it's worth it if he does opt in but the odds are he's not going to and even if he does yeah. opt in they'll suck anyway so where would he really go matter. though I don't know. He's gonna be the top free agent just because there's no one else. I don't know the class. It's I, it's like it's really bad. Drummond might be the top guy. Yeah. Yeah. So it's what's all in, if he's the top guy. Not like Drummond's bad Madison. or anything. No, no. Drummond's the best rebounder in the league. If you could th- get that for John Henson and Brad the Knight, agree. Take that on a heartbeat. I, it That's. just ruins their draft pick stock, which I don't really like that much. But otherwise, I would agree with you. I think that with the chance of him coming back, then yeah, it's worth it. But yeah, the top free agents this summer are Anthony Davis, who's probably not going to be. Oh, he is going to be free. He's not leaving. He opted out. He's not going to leave LA, but he opted out. Especially if they make it to like the Western Conference Finals, he's not he's not opting out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. He had too much fun this year. Mm -hmm. After that, it goes Draymond Green, Mike Conley, Andre Drummond, yikes, uh, Eric Gordon, Gordon Hayward, Demar Derozan. So the only one in that class I see leaving realistically is Demar Derozan. Derozan. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yikes. It's it's a bad free agency class this year. Very bad free agency class, but. The Knicks will be rumored to every single person on that list, so <laughs> hopefully, it's okay. Hopefully. Like, Eric Gordon's going to be the next the savior, next right? <laughs> <laughs> Eric Gordon. Uh, he's the next Allen Houston. Yeah, but moving on, there was some Knicks news. Yes. We got some Knicks news. Marcus mm-hmm. Morris traded for a bag of fucking chips. It was a good <laughs> trade. Literally, no, literally. Good trade. What, what did they Mo get? Mo Harkless. Mo Harkless and the, and the first round pick, good which trade. is going to be like good 27. Look, they, <laughs> yeah. they were either going to lose them this summer. Yeah, for that's nothing. true. Or they were gonna. First of all, they shouldn't even have Marcus Morris in the first place. They shouldn't. Have, they shined, yeah. They signed way too many bigs. No, not even that. Do you remember no, what like happened? Spurs. Spurs. No, that he had beef with the Marcus Spurs. Marcus Morris was supposed to go to the Spurs, and he mm-hmm. backed out, and he went to the Knicks, and he just earned the Knicks a first round draft pick in half a year. That's all that happened here. Knicks picked up a draft pick for a player so. they shouldn't have had, and that's just a so. W. That's, that's it. Valid. The Clippers, though, they're making moves. Very great move by great the Clippers. Moves. And Morris, Morris, Reggie they, Jackson. And Reggie Jackson. Uh-huh. They picked yeah. up Reggie Jackson the other day. They made sure the Lakers didn't get him, too. Yeah, I think, I think that's piece. what they're doing. They're just making sure the Lakers don't get these players. That's uh-huh. all it is. <laughs> like, they're coming to L.A., but, like, not the Lakers, the Lakers. don't have depth to handle the Clippers. They just don't. And the Clippers just keep adding pieces. But they pieces have LeBron. Pieces. They don't have depth. They have LeBron. Yeah, LeBron is depth. You guys both LeBron, LeBron is depth. When he, LeBron plays I think, 40 I think, minutes, it's I think the we'll, Lakers. We will get back to this after, but like just a quick preview to that conversation. You think the Lakers are going to beat the Clippers in the yeah. Western Conference Finals? Yeah. Yeah. Is it too? Am I outnumbered here? Wow, okay. I, think, totally. I hear. I just think fair. the power of LeBron will outlast yes, Kawhi, even though Kawhi has had LeBron's number before. Mm-hmm. The Clippers haven't played together enough to be a... I don't even see them as a championship I mean, contender right now. But have the Lakers, though? Yes. The Lakers that LeBron's played with so far is, uh, they traded away Brandon Ingram, they traded away Lonzo Ball, they traded away uh, Josh Hart. I'm talking about this season with all the injuries oh, and the load management. They have Fair enough. There's okay. no chemistry there. I mean, I don't know. It's only been a year, anyways, for the, for the Lakers. How much chemistry can you get really get there? LeBron and AD? No, it's only yeah, LeBron no, and AD. I mean, that's, that's all you need. That's really all you need. all you need. Exactly. No, but that's what I'm saying. It's LeBron and KD. I mean, LeBron and AD versus a team. And then like, Danny Green hitting those casual like four threes. Mm-hmm. But let's say, let's say, like, you know? when if LeBron's out of the game and the Lakers are have a, I mean, the Clippers have a lineup of Lou Williams, Lou Montrez, uh, like, for the five minutes every other quarter, LeBron the takes Lakers, a four and they're screwed. The Lakers have That's those it. scrappy players like Avery Bradley, KCP, uh, you know, those kind of guys. Those Caruso, scrappy dude. players can't live up to the scrappy players of Lou Williams, uh, Marcus Morris. I could see, uh, I could see Avery Montrez Bradley. Harrell. I could see Avery Bradley. Uh, Defending them when nah, LeBron's not out there. I mean, I don't think the, I don't think the, the point differential defense. when they come in is going to be as big as you think it is. I do, I do. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if the Lakers are up by five and they only go down by two points when LeBron comes back in, I think that's like I don't think that's a big deal. You know? Uh, yeah, we'll see. Something like that. Uh, and then the last last trade that actually caught my eye was the Heat trading for Andre Iguodala just because the beef with the Grizzlies, mm-hmm. John Morant, Dylan Brooks. Saying that, like, ah, he doesn't want to play yeah, it was, for us. It's pretty cool. Something's it's going on in Miami where yes. teams are just handing them players for nothing. nothing. For nothing. It nothing. was weird because I don't like this for the Heat because they just tr- they just they signed Iguodala for an extra year for seventeen million dollars for fifteen million. They also get Jay Crowder though. Jay Crowder's playing. Jay Crowder's yeah, a great Crowder's, player. No, I'm not talking about the trade itself. The trade it worked out fine for them. That's that's okay. But uh, they they agreed to sign Iguodala for two years, thirty million dollar extension, like. Why? He's a championship player. But fifteen million dollars a year. But for think Andre, about who they Dallas, let go of. 30, the Heat. Think about this. Five year seasons. They yeah. they let go of like James it. Johnson zero. They yeah. let go of Justice Winslow injury headache that mm-hmm. like you never wanted. 
Uh, Dion Waiters. They didn't also, give up much. They won, even they know what he won was the doing. trade itself, but at the same time, it's just like, like why would they do that extension part? Uh, that just bothered me. I don't know. Everything else is fine. Whatever it makes sense. They have everyone on working contracts. Why, why does that? Why does that bother you? Because he's not that good. He's not fifteen million dollars good. Of course he is. Andre Iguodala is not fi- He was Finals MVP two years ago. He won the He's Warriors a championship. What are you talking good. about? He got blocked uh, by LeBron too. He did get blocked <laughs> by LeBron though. I don't remember that. I paid fifteen million to get blocked by LeBron like that. Oh, oh my whatever. god. I disagree, but whatever. It's fair. It's 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 a valid opinion. He won it. I guess three, three years ago. Yeah, three years ago. I don't even before remember. Before KD got there, so it's like yeah. twenty. It was whatever. Three four years ago, but twenty sixteen maybe. He's he's. He's not going to put up the numbers like the 20 and 10s, no, he's, but he's, he's going to win you games. He's the hustle guy. I don't know if he's I'm the hustle guy. He's the defense guy. He's the one that's going to bring the energy. He's the uh, ultimate hustle guy. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. No, Marcus guard. Smart is the ultimate hustle guy. Sure. <laughs> Come on. He's a pretty solid hustle Smart's guy. Smart's not an Iguodala. I'm not saying he's Iguodala, but the reason he's a solid why, hustle the, guy. Yeah, he is. But the reason why Iguodala is so, you know, valuable is because he's just a basketball genius. His IQ is so high. Speaking of Marcus Smart, though, I picked him up just for one game. He had four steals. Game against the Clippers. 30. 31 points. Yeah. Great pick. Come on. Oh. All right. When he has those four steal games, I love it. Mm-hmm. Die for those games. Uh, MVP. I think we all agree here. I think it's Giannis. Yeah, it just I wish be. it was LeBron, but it's Giannis. It's Giannis. He, the Bucks are just too good this year. Yeah. Giannis is putting up ridiculous numbers. It's like, like, how can you not give it to him? In limited minutes. True. And, like, let's say, like, he plays against, like, the, the Cavaliers, and then he's like, yeah, you, you can ride the bench today. You don't need to play. Imagine how shitty you feel if you're the Cavs. <laughs> if like you're playing him and you're like, <laughs> like imagine that feeling. Yeah. It's like I know, I would be we're happy. playing the Bucks today, but Giannis isn't playing. I would. I disagree. I would be ecstatic if Giannis wasn't playing. No, but the th- doesn't that make you feel like shit though? Yeah, the disrespect <laughs> is real. <laughs> it's so disrespectful. I don't. I, but it's, it's more disrespectful to get jumped over by Giannis. So <laughs> that's that true. was crazy. That was oh my god. What Tim Hardaway? Tim yes. Hardaway. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. One of my favorite highlights. Defensive player of the year, you guys also went Giannis? Giannis, mm-hmm. yeah. So, 100%. so, I like AD though. I don't think it's 100%. It's not as set. I looked, I just searched up the odds for who do, who they think is going to win. Right now, they have Anthony Davis as a minus 300 favorite, which mm-hmm. kind of tells you, like, okay, this is this guy's going to win it. Yeah. That much is crazy. I was going between him but and Rudy. Giannis is having a really, really good defensive season, too. Uh, they have him at plus 300, actually, so it's like a, it's a good value. Where's Rudy? You know? Rudy is. Rudy Gobert is plus 200. So, I mean, it's another yeah. good value bet right there. So, you get Giannis at plus 650 at FanDuel. That's a great bet. Giannis is... <laughs> he leads the I league in defensive plus minus. Does he really? Yeah. He's a good oh, wow. player. He's a really good defensive player. He's, he's putting up great numbers on defensive end, too. They don't, you, you, we don't really hear defensive numbers being put out there that much in, like, the media. You know what I'm talking Like, it's not really a huge uh, talking point. But he does... He has been putting up these kinds of two-way impacts that he is the best player. He's he's been the best player in the sport this year. He's been the, he was the best player in the sport last year. You know, yeah, that's, that's I just agree. What it is. Yeah, coach of the year. Nurse. We both agreed again. Nick Nurse. So far, yeah. Why not Eric Spolstra? One hundred percent, Nick Nurse. I understand that he lost Kawhi and he's still a great team, but also like the pieces were still there to yeah. have a solid team. You know. Mm-hmm. Like, he still has Siakam, he still has whatever, but then you take Eric Spolcher, who's taken, like... Well, Jimmy he took Butler, Jimmy Butler and Bam, Bam Adebayo. Adebayo. Bam Adebayo okay. is phenomenal. Okay. He's the best player but also, on the Heat. But also, what about Nunn and thing, Duncan right? Robinson? Like, yeah, I mean, sure, but you could say the same thing about Terrence Davis and uh, Fred Van Vliet, who came from the Honestly, team. they should have... They they what about Billy Donovan? With oh, 100%. I yeah, no, no, he's, he's, he's a candidate, he's a candidate. Definitely consider it. Um, I, I think that him. if the Rockets could string together a good second half of the season, Mike D'Antoni, too. Mike D'Antoni, if if Why? they could string together a good second half, because if he takes this small ball lineup that's not supposed to win anything, uh, and he leads them to a top, uh, realistically they could be a top three seed record wise right now. They're three games out of the third seed. But I just think even 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 Nick Nurse in that conversation. Nick Nurse has been a better coach this year. Spolstra and Billy Donovan have all been better coaches than. If D'Antoni manages to take this no, this six I, seven center team to a, <laughs> to six, a top seven. three seed, then no, I could see him getting it. But right now, it's I think it's easily Nick Nurse. I, Spolstra's up there, Donovan's up there. There's but one person that we're yes. not really considering that also has to be up there oh. because just the way that these awards work, Bradley. When you have Bradley a, Stevens, not not Bradley. <laughs> when you have a team that has the best record by a long shot, 
Oh. They always have a chance. Like, the coach will always have a chance to win it. So that's what I want. I'm not saying Frank Vogel. I'm saying Mike Budenholzer. I know. He has know. a very good chance to win it. And just because the team is 48-8 and eight right now. That's the name. 46-8. I, 46 realistically, eight. I think it might be Billy Donovan just because OKC had zero hopes this year. Oh, and now the, they're a playoff The team. narrative works a lot better for Billy Donovan than it does for, uh, for Mike Budenholzer. Oh, but yeah, of course. But not for Nick Nurse. Not for Nick Nurse. Again. No, because he won a but championship. Kawhi comes here, wins the ship, games dips. And, and you're still not and you're still, still second really, really seed. Good. You're still really, really, really good. Uh-huh. Yeah. Van Vliet's playing great. Siakam's playing better somehow than he did last year. Yeah. He He's, could win. He could realistically win most improved after a year where he averaged like 15 and like 8. Whatever he averaged last year, I have no idea. I mean, I, he's not winning most improved. Yeah, no, most improved is very stacked this year. You got Devontae Graham. I don't think it's even close. And you got Brandon Ingram. I don't even think so it's that all-star. Have? So who do you have? A, a Bam Adebayo is the most improved player of the year, and it's not even close. Really? Not even close. He's really? the Heat's best player. He's what about Devontae Graham averaging 20 and 10? What about Brandon Ingram being an all-star this okay. year, averaging Devante 25 Graham. and whatever he's averaging? Devontae Graham does not average 20 and 10. Okay. Retract what is he at? Retract, 18? Ret- what, he retract, 18 and 10? Retract your statement. Okay. <laughs> let, let me hear retract, it. No, retract, retract it first. I want, I want to hear what he averages. Retract it first. I'm, I can't retract until... He averages 18, 4, and 8. Oh, he also... God. His efficiency is 30... He shoots 38% from the field. <laughs> that's ridiculously ter- that's okay, terrible. That's terrible. Okay, what did he do last year? He averaged like four points last year. Five. Five and three. Five and three. <laughs> That's a pretty big no, improvement. he's not going to win it because he's not on a good team either, but he What about Brandon Ingram? What about Brandon Ingram? Brandon Ingram is the current favorite for it right now. He, uh... Bam. Bam out of bio is... But Bam was doing fourth, good last year, too. best odds. Tied with Mike. He averaged nine and seven. Oh, we, my, our picks at the same odds. Bam averaged nine and seven last yes. year? Yes. Bam is really good. Any he's averaging 16, too. 10, and 5. This guy, he's, he's a great ridiculous. So who's, he's so who's the favorite, though? Why the favorite right now, we have Brandon Ingram at plus 150. Yeah. Luka Doncic plus 175. Oh, my God. Uh, I don't like any of Luka either. Uh, he's a superstar last year. No, you can't give it to Not Luka. Not a fan for it. Not a fan. Devonta Graham plus 400. Bam plus 650. And then Shy plus 650 also. And then the rest of them are just long shots. Okay. Ingram, you can make a case for Ingram. I think Bam, Bam is... Bam and Bobby Trez? Can you make a case no. for Trez? No, no, no. Not for Compared to these two, no. No. He, Montrez had an amazing season this year. Bam embodies what it is to be a Heat player. He's a hey. competitor. Are oh, you Donis Haslam, as, as some might say? He's he's a really, <laughs> really, <laughs> really, really he good still there? Yeah, yeah, he's still there. <laughs> he's still he's there. a really, really good Udonis Haslam. Yes. I love ben. it. They just pay him like royalties. Like, Udonis Haslam is Bobby Bonilla, but if he had a roster spot, you know? Yes. Oh, yeah, God. I agree. 100%. Sixth man? Six man of the year. I think we all went different ways there's, here. Okay, there's there's got to oh, be. I remember what I did. Yeah. There's there's got to be like. It's got to be on the Clippers. That's really what it comes down to. I don't to think me. so. I think that the winner has to be on the Clippers. I have it's it either Lou or Williams. Lou, Lou Trez. Which so, is weird. Who do you guys have? Who do you guys have? I have Trez. He has Lou and. Lou I have I have Dennis Schroeder. Dennis Schroeder. Yeah. Ooh, because interesting. One. Because all right, hear me out. Mm-hmm. First of all, the Clippers bench just went from Lou Will to Trez. Mm-hmm. Their depth chart is went from Lou Will to Trez to Marcus Morris, Reggie Jackson, Lou Will Trez. Like that, they're much more, they're yeah. much deeper now. Yeah, of course, one hundred percent. I think that you know we were talking about how the Thunder are overachieving before, and Dennis Schroeder, their sixth man, it's pivotal to that. He's averaging twenty a game, I think. He's averaging something close he's to playing it. He's really, playing really well this year. Playing season. really, really well. He's yeah, he's my he's my pick for sixth man. Did you co- that- come off the bench behind Chris Paul in a lost season, and and they're what? They're what seed are they? They're they're six seed. Yeah, you know, in a stacked Western Conference. A hundred, uh, stacked Western Conference, and he's making an impact. It's it's like Lou Will. Like okay, listen. Obviously, the Clippers aren't as good without Lou Will. But you take away Lou Will, you have Kawhi and Paul George and Montrez Harrell. Like you take away, you take away Schroeder. You have you know Chris Paul and Gallinari, who are both playing great. But I think Schroeder is doing a lot more for his team. That's fair. I think that uh, I think that Lou Will is gonna win it. Because he's just, he's just he's Lou Will. Will. <laughs> but he's Lou Will. I think that <laughs> I think that Schroeder. You definitely have a very good argument for Schroeder. Like he is, he is one of the secondary, one of the better secondary options. Him along with like Spencer Dinwiddie before Kyrie got hurt, obviously. But now that none of that, it's over. He can't win that award anymore. But otherwise, I think that 
outside of the two Clippers, I'd say Schroeder has the best chance. Yeah, that's really what it comes down to, in my opinion. And then, and then rookie of the year, obviously, I think it's Ja. Yeah, it's Ja. ja. Yeah. It's a, I mean, if, Kendrick not what, about, chance, what about what about what about Zion if he has a great second half of the year? Doesn't no. matter. No, no chance. Doesn't matter. Missed the first three months. Yeah, I mean, you missed the first three months. So uh-huh. Like no chance. I mean, Ja's been playing out of his mind though. So yes. it's like yeah, Ja's really. It's like the year where Malcolm Brogdon won. Yeah, there's nobody there. I mean, Ja's better than. I mean, maybe he's not better than Malcolm Brogdon now, but no, in terms of of. And be playing. Oh, yeah, there's back nobody the there. The yeah, yeah. Like oh, Ben Simmons there. also like yeah. not playing. Whatever. It's funny because there was an MLB one like that a couple years ago but, with uh, Gary Sanchez when he lost to uh, Michael Fulmer, and everyone was like pissed about it. And then it's funny now, like looking back, like the guy who won it hasn't played since. Like, really? ma- let's say like let's say it was like this like with Malcolm Brogdon, but imagine like the Malcolm Brogdon got hurt, and now the Yankees fans are always like, oh, he should have won instead. But it's like, it's not true. It's not the way it works. <laughs> you know, like if the guy misses half a year, he's not going to win the award. It's just the way it works. But, uh, uh, All-Star Weekend. Great. Great, 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 great uh-huh. format. I think it should have been a tie. No okay, no. no. Can I tell you something? I had $40 on Aaron Horton. Oh, that's and, why. Um, first of all, having a tie is not a thing to do. They just dunk and dunk and dunk. That's very funny. We did, he just got an alert from Bleacher Report. Andre the Drummond just told his teammates that the situation in Cleveland is worse than it was in Detroit. <laughs> That's so sad. That's so funny. <laughs> Live on air. That's, not- <laughs> That's ridiculous. Uh-huh. That's great. Do you, do you know what my favorite thing was? That the worst. was? Do you ever do you remember Blake Griffin was doing that interview after the game and Reggie Jack and he's like talking about how bad the team was playing and everything like that and Reggie Jackson walks up and starts photobombing him? <laughs> it's the funniest highlight of all time. B roll that it's a great one. Um But anyways, back you had, to you. You had forty dollars on it. I'm sure that has to do with the coach though. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. The coach changed. The coach that's gone. Beelines like, out. Yeah. yeah. Um okay, so back to the dunk guys. I had forty dollars on it. If you think that that should have been a tie you are a blow this out pussy. Ties don't happen. Continue dunking until it's over. There Facts. has to be a winner. Yeah, this yeah, is no, sports. No this isn't political correctness. <laughs> we are not doing ties. Ties are disgusting. But ties are pussy. What I will shit. say is that yes, facts. <laughs> uh, that was a clean. That was, that was very clean. Very clean dab. Very. But. Clean. Not like last time. With no, Dapgate. <laughs> yeah. It's pre, pre, Lars has previous For so like experience. the one person who's listened, <laughs> they would know. <laughs> they <Dap> understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, wait, is that our first recurring joke? No. Dapgate. That's I guess. Possible. That's very cool. Okay, get back to where we were. It ties up for pussies. And... Yeah, I mean, they what was your favorite? I think that Gordon should have won. Oh, come Taco? on, you know the answer. No. What? what? What was your favorite? Though? No, what's the side of the backboard no. scoop 360? Are you no. nuts? No, okay, that was pretty good. That one was that very was nice, but no, the through the legs over the person. No, the that wasn't mine. That was Derek Jones, though. My, no, that was my favorite my, one. No, my second favorite dunk was, was actually Pat Connaughton. Pat Connaughton, that's my 100%. favorite dunk. Pat Connaughton. That was very clean, too. Off the backboard over Giannis. Very that's, clean. That's, no, that's, that's, no, off the backboard over Giannis. That was yeah. the best dunk on that. No, second best dunk. No, no, you Aaron Gordon hit it with the who? No, but, no. Aaron Gordon just had the greatest dunk of the dunk. He the backboard and did through. A white man, a white man dunked over a seven foot Giannis, pumped it off the backboard and went in. That is a that is the best dunk of the night. No, that's the second best dunk of the night. But Aaron Gordon's dunk takes that easy. Like it's not even close. It Aaron Gordon side of the backboard. Yes, I love that dunk. I love Derrick Jones through the legs and Pat Content obviously. Mm-hmm. I just don't like how Aaron Gordon did the same dunk twice. Let's be real yeah. here. The three sixty over Chance. He did that twice. Mm-hmm. Same did. exact dunk. Same exact dunk. I don't think ran out of ran out of material. I don't think you should. Mm-hmm. I don't think I, like, he didn't deserve a fifty for that. He didn't. No. He had the best dunk of the night. No, no. He Derek deserved the 50 for Taco, but not a 50 either. for that. Um, I actually read somewhere that Nate Robinson has one perfect score of a 50, and he won how many dunk contests? Three. Three. Aaron Gordon has the most of all time, most perfect scores. He has he eight, has not, he has not and three. he never won one, <laughs> which is ridiculous. Uh-huh. But also, they, they, they're they more likely to dish out 50s now. Yeah. Uh, Dwayne Wade. They're, they're, he's, he's they're not the as heat. harsh critics. Yeah, no. Dwayne no. Wade is plugging the heat. 
Uh, even after it retiring. Was heavy, heavy that it was. It, he was saying it all night though, because Pat Connaughton should have advanced in the first round too. Hundred percent. His, his first two dunks were better than Derrick Jones's first two dunks. So, Pat Connaughton's first no, dunk was a white man can't jump dunk, which was which was a pretty good one. But like when you have a movie reference and you have the outfit, yeah, yeah you get you a little the more crowd in there. You get you get you get the, the style points. Like it wasn't a fifty dunk, but it was a good enough dunk that it should have been better than the forty six that Derrick Jones put up. For his first dunk. So the way it works is Derrick Jones had a 46 and a 50, Pat Connaughton had a 45 and a 50. And he uh-huh. lost by one point. But it shouldn't have happened like that. Right? But also, did you want to see Pat Connaughton yes. against Gordon? Yes, 100%. yes. 100%. I, want, I want to see the David versus Goliath type of thing because I think that... He, Connaughton's got bunnies. Connaughton, if you jump over a 7-foot guy and pump it off the backboard, you deserved... I, I want to see more of that. That was insane. But we all dunk. came to see Derrick Jones, though. Come, we all came to see Airplane Mode. I don't care. I came to see Pat Connaughton. I came to see the best dunker. I came to see Pat Connaughton. No, I didn't say the best dunker. No. I came to see the most no, You came to see Aaron Connaughton. Gordon, and then Pat whoever was against him. That's what you came Pat to see. Pat Connaughton's actually... A free, he actually recorded the, the second highest vertical in all of draft combine. And he played is, baseball, you know. which is crazy to me. Yeah. You know, he's the only, you know he struck out Michael Conforto on the game once? Did he actually? Yeah. He's the only person that ever struck out Michael Conforto and also dunk. You know, <laughs> 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 Doug over Giannis. <laughs> Great, very, very, very exclusive stat. club. <laughs> um, oh my God! The you don't have to hit it off stat. the backboard, though. You just have to jump over Giannis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> still, still ridiculous. <laughs> um, and but the All Star Game, so exciting. Yeah, it yes. was great. It was that great. fourth quarter, where it's untimed, you have to get to a target score. Mm-hmm. I loved it. Great change. You know what I loved? I loved. Great. I loved and hated watching Kyle Lowry play. <laughs> I nice. loved it and I hated it. This exactly. was exactly love, his love type the charge. of game. Yeah. Love the charge, but... Hate that he's going Hate that you're actually taking your charge in an all-star yeah. game. No, but love that's what's crazy. This is exactly his type of game. It was a uh-huh. scrappy, chippy game going mm-hmm. back and forth. Lowry fit in there perfectly. Yeah. I like how uh, Chris Paul played over Luka, I think, towards the end. I think he was playing great. He actually mm-hmm. let a comeback in the fourth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it's like a lot of three-pointers, no? Like, yeah, yeah, no. Then, CP3 was... And then, yeah, quiet eight. Little. Yeah, no. I, I kind of like the way they added twenty four to the to get to the target. Yeah, score. yes, that was nice. it was great. It, I think it, they it, should it, keep that. It's it, a little street ball-y. Like I like it. Yeah, it's very, it's very yeah. street ball-y. I think that I think that be, because they're keeping the award name as like the Kobe Bryant MVP award. Yeah. I think they got to keep they, it. They, you keep the format as this twenty four thing. No, it, it's worked. Just great it worked. It worked. It just yeah. really worked. It worked really it, well. It worked well, straight up. And then to wrap up the show, we kind of talked on it before, but predictions for the rest of the season. So we will do Eastern Conference Finals, Western Conference yeah. Finals, Finals. Okay. So my Eastern Conference Finals, I have the Bucks playing against the Seventy Sixers. Then don't the, hate it. The West one, I have the Lakers versus the Clippers, and I think that's the most obvious. I think we're all consensus. Are the Lakers playing the Clippers in the Conference Finals? Yes. I don't know about that. You say okay. you say the Jazz. I don't know why. Though. I think I think that uh, I, I I hope that the Clippers can piece it together and give us a crazy seven game series against the Lakers. I'm scared that they won't. That's that's how that's really. That's why I'm I think scared. we all want that. Because in Staples Center, all seven. Yeah. I would say, I would say awesome. that the, if if not the Clippers and the Nuggets, but I don't know if the Nuggets are ready. I don't know if they're ready yet. I think that the Jazz, I like I like what they got going on. I like it. Do you think that it would be technically seven home games for the Lakers just because the Laker fans would out dominate the Clipper fans? Am I crazy? You just uh, blew my mind. Yeah, honestly. It's kind of like seven. I, that would probably home games. happen. But you just blew my mind. I don't know. It's isn't it on the low. It's, there's no traveling, so it's there's, also like yeah, it's an great, advantage by the way. for both Except, teams. Like, yeah, I mean, there's just no disadvantage. But also at the same time, we all know that there's more like yeah, no, of course, it's like yeah. a known thing. You know, but I'm saying like there's no there's no plane rides to go get booed or anything like that. The home the home field that one of the biggest things about home home field is that you don't have to travel to get there. Home yeah, court. home court. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the most part, but yeah. you guys. Are they gonna switch locker rooms every night? Oh, that's probably so annoying. <laughs> Fact. That's that so annoying. That's, very funny. that's so annoying. <laughs> yeah, that's very funny. No, also for the people that like have to like change the floorboards and everything, mm-hmm. like you have to change yeah. the, then you have to change all the stuff in the stadium to to like Clipper stuff and then all the stuff to Lakers stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's gotta get annoying. So yeah, wait, Lawrence, what do you have after that? Okay, so then for the finals, I had the Bucks against the Clippers because I think the Clippers would beat the Lakers in the seven game series, but mm-hmm. and I think the Clippers will win that series. I think Kawhi puts the clamps on Giannis, and that's really just it. Okay, <laughs> but I'll I'll go a little backwards. I have a basic, basic bitch approach to the finals <laughs> with the Lakers and the Bucks, because okay. like that's like all these bet. But that's not the way to the get there, wins. I think the Raptors will be pay- playing the Bucks. It's fair. It's valid. It's, it's a valid, valid one. And this, obviously, Clippers. My only thing but about what we're I like doing the Raptors. The... I like them too much, you know. I like about, them more than the 76ers, yeah. more than the Celtics, like. 
uh-uh. more than the it, Pacers. At the end like, of the day, it doesn't really matter because it's all about it's gonna be what Bucks. round you play the Bucks in. Exactly. So when we are making our Eastern Conference finals predictions, it's like okay, you have to if you ended the four or five seed. It just means that you're playing the Bucks around earlier than you would in the Western Conference. So I don't know about that. It's just our, our best two teams. No. I don't know about that. What do you mean? Look who I have making my finals. You you have... Oh! Okay. So, oh! So I got... What? The East, for the East, Get, I have Celtics, Bucks. You're okay. such a Celtics fan. That's only something okay. a Celtics Bucks. fan would do. Let me finish. Okay. Let, me finish. Let me finish. I have Celtics, Bucks. Um, for the West, I have Lakers, obviously. And if the Clippers can put it together easily, the Clippers, if not... I can see the the Jazz making it because as of right now, standings wise, I'm pretty sure they're playing the Rockets in the first round. Okay, that's a good. Um, and yeah, they could be the Rockets. They, Rudy Gobert is Rudy just gonna Gobert average twenty and twenty. Like that's uh, not even close. Yeah, yeah. So, um, if they can piece it together, yeah. But if not, I can see the Jazz making it. The Lakers win that, obviously. So my finals is Lakers, Celtics, classic. Oh, classic <laughs> rematch. Classic rematch. We get what we want. Whip out the popcorn. Okay, what everyone wants is the Lakers and the Clippers. That's that's literally what everyone wants. That's it. I want Lakers Celtics. And then whoever wins that gets to play the Bucks. That's really what everyone wants. Uh-huh. I don't. I can't. Can I tell you why I can't see the Bucks beating the Celtics? Why? why? Because Tatum is a superstar. Oh my! Oh, and Giannis isn't. Giannis, and Giannis is, is the best player on the planet right but, now. But but Kemba's also a superstar, and Brown is a fringe All Star. And okay. Gordon Hayward, Middleton, and Bledsoe, and they have the players. They have the. Had Pat Connaughton too, bro. Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, my bad. <laughs> I actually love off the bench for them, Divincenzo. He's, he's pretty playing, good. Yeah, he's yeah, playing great. Divincenzo too. He's a good yeah. player. Like know, they, they have the depth too. It's but it's weird because they play against like the worst competition ever. So their forty six and eight doesn't feel like the when the Warriors were like putting out their crazy records and they put up 73 and 9 they look they felt like the most unbeatable team when they had Kevin Durant and they in this different year obviously but what the, you the say Bucks, they're more beatable yeah i'm saying the bucks don't have that feeling to them where it's I like agree. every yeah, single that. player is like the best player on their on earth they have a feeling of, of a really really good team which they are but i don't think that they're the <laughs> they're a super team by any means i think that the closest team to that is the clippers i know you guys will disagree with me but I think, the, I think the Clippers are, are the most stacked, stacked team talent. Though. Besides for the Celtics. Okay. Tatum, Brown, Kemba, that Hayward, would, that Smart. Celt- a Celtics versus Clippers final would be so much fun. That, those, that I like game that. I the like other the night. That. Did you watch the game that went to double overtime? Double Lakers, overtime, Clippers? Yeah. Crazy. I mean, not like uh, Clippers, Celtics. Crazy Marcus game. Smart, baby. Pro- and every I mean, play was a highlight. Like, every single play was uh, Kemba crossing Sham. Sham hitting that deep three. Uh... Uh, Jason Tatum, Tatum with that yeah, dunk, yeah, Jason Tatum with that step yeah. back three. Ridiculous game from both sides. Like everyone was just hitting and everyone like it was crazy game. Tatum right. has superstar written all over him and I wouldn't be surprised if he was a top five player next season. I would not be surprised. Top ten. That's a, top that's five, a, top that's ten. a spicy five, take. Five, five, five like is it. a little high. I like I like the courage, but I disagree with you. That's all right. right. Superstar written all, he's defense, I don't think five, offense. Five. Five. five as of five. right now, as five of right now I have him like Borderline five. I would seven, say, seven, like, but like you eight. have like LeBron, Giannis, Harden, mm-hmm. like all eighty, yeah, all I these know. guys. Like, I, know, I know what I said. <laughs> I know who's there. I think that at, if you <laughs> if you rank the NBA players right now, I have Jason Tatum at like eighteen or nineteen. So something, something like that, low twenty, so, so low. with a little bit like around that range, just because there are so many guys. Would you put Luca over? But him? yeah, hundred percent. I don't know about that. You really wouldn't. Luka, I would put Luca over. I don't know about him. that. I would put Luca over. Luca's a war- walking Tatum. thirty ten ten. Tatum no, he's not. Is such, he is. He's like a walking 28. Tatum, Tatum is That's, such a good What's the difference? <laughs> that was two points. It's a layup. You really get to get out, out, get heavy for one layup. <laughs> Tatum's defense is absurd. It's crazy. It's crazy. Luke is a 7-7 seven, seven winger. Like a 6-7 winger. Okay. Defense. Okay. okay. This, is a, this is a topic for another day. <laughs> but we got to get to class. So yeah. wrapping up the show. Thank you, Maybe, for mm-hmm. coming on. Thank you for having yeah. me. You're always, literally always, always welcome to come on. Like, <laughs> uh-huh. The NBA conversation is always flowing when you're here, and awesome. we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching my vlog. Please like and subscribe.